And this COP, therefore, was um, yeah the implementation. Like, okay, what's happening on the ground? Which investments are taking place? Um, um, what is blocking progress? Uh, why are we not doing more? Rather than trying to get the commitment of new targets or new commitments or no new promises, but rather um, showing specific tools, specific actions that are have been tried um, to to move into action, and on the other hand, so that that's kind of the, still what are we doing? On the other hand, um, because we realize that we haven't progressed as much as we have to do, um, the 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 fears are that we are not going to meet the targets, or that it's getting more and more complicated, and therefore it's just wise to get ready for the worst the scenarios, no, for what will happen, and that's where also no from. Um, the developing countries perspective is okay uh, we're saying a lot but we're not meeting so where is our support particularly to adapt to those changes and particularly to pay the bills of the the extreme events and all the costs that we're incurring already today so that's that's uh, the, the the double focus so it's implementation but realizing what are we doing to take action and realizing what else we have to do because we haven't done as much as we had to Climate diplomacy is becoming um, very, very relevant uh, in the um, uh, political spheres at all the levels. And at least uh, really what I can witness uh, in the bilateral discussions, uh, especially with the larger emerging economies, no? the Indias, Indonesians, South Africa, uh, China, etc. It's in uh, across across the the. Um, all the the kind of main bilateral cooperation agreements climate is uh, among the top three discussions and not just this but also becoming a bit of the umbrella because we know climate change in itself it's it's not um it's basically the consequences of many other policies right um, but it does provide a good umbrella and a good travel of direction of um uh, for, for many of the other things that are being negotiated bilaterally an example i think is uh, for for example, the relationship between China and uh, and the EU, and uh, whereas many in many other fields um, things are becoming difficult, climate is um, still you know one of those um, uh, political fields or policy fields that manage to have a common agenda, and uh, we're seeing you now it's a very complicated. Um, context that we have with uh, um, a, a lot of you know, also nationalism emerging, etc. And the only real place, I, in, in my view, where cooperation is really discussed is um, within the climate uh, negotiations. Litigation um, is um, becoming very important, and still we're not seeing uh, all its potential. But we um, we see how this is becoming more and more important, and a lot of philanthropic money also being invested in supporting um, all these litigation processes. And why is that? I think because, as we said, now we had the commitments. Now we are really putting our efforts into specific instruments to move into action and doing it and learning by doing um, and what we need the third leg is this accountability leg right to make sure that we can uh, keep um, countries accountable uh, companies accountable uh, some nations accountable anyone that has to take action so the I would say um, it has kicked litigation efforts. It has kicked, it's very important, but in order to be most effective, what is needed is a very clear understanding of um, the efforts no, and the path and, and the actions that each of the act actors should take in a coherent manner to achieve those goals. Otherwise, it will be very difficult for litigation to, to go further. To a large extent, the problem we have is one of um, 
uh, coordination and one of understanding very well um, where are the tipping points, what are the choices um, that we have to make, what are the no regret actions, what are and um, and this is really what I think the the, the public uh, the, the governments really need to do in in a way because um, it's not that we can you know um, leave it we don't have many margins of maneuver so um, it is really um, uh, a change that somehow has to be forced and very well orchestrated. Um, it's true that we need individuals to change. It's good that we need many other things happening globally, but it is true that it has to be um, very well orchestrated and, and national, subnational governments uh, do need to play a huge role in, in bringing this coherence no? and this vision and this understanding of what needs to happen for all the actors to really then be able to um, to work on the same direction in the most effective manner. And this is because we don't have much time. There are many circumstantial things that happen over time, and then we see emissions doing a strange things. Those are strange things, although they are important because, of course, all those emissions are going into the atmosphere and are being accumulated there, but do not tell us if we are doing the structural transformations that we should be doing. So um, the emissions, yes, they've been doing a strange things. It has been a very... Um, um, uh, yeah, um, complicated, complex uh, period over the last three, four years. Um, but I, I think we are stabilizing. And what is important, we are starting, just starting now, to undertake some of these more structural transformations that will allow us to see the emissions dropping over a few years. China, I think, is, for example, a good um, indi uh, a good. Um, uh, it, it's a critical, of course, country and seeing that China is picking the emissions. And uh, I think most of the experts confirm that this is a trend that is not re that um, that will not change again. So they have really entered into stabiliz stabilization uh, phase of their emissions and now they will drop. Um, I think, um, yeah, that that is that is a, a hopeful and I think a good sign. What we're not doing sufficient, I think, is in the developed uh, country worlds where um, we had to stabilize emissions for a while and we are uh, in the phase of reduction and those reductions are not as large as they should be doing. For me, the most important is um, this planning, this capacity to anticipate, to understand what transformations are needed, how our sectors are going to change, which sectors are going to be driving the economy in our country in in this transition and in, in, in a context of, of an economy without emissions. Um, there has been a lot of efforts, for example, to then develop a specific mechanisms to compensate for the affected people, um, for example, on coal mines no? and, and coal affected regions. But this is just a little example. We will have the same with the automotive sector. We will have the same with the agriculture sector. We will have the same with um, bringing no? uh, SMEs um, along and being able that they, they um, they can keep a competitive no, position within this transition. And this is where the effort, in my view, no, of, of, um, of the public administration has to be, is, is an orchestrating it, what we were saying before, planning it, but especially like making sure that those um, um, potential negative consequences do not take place.